of us here know that there are seven continents in the world out of which there are some large continents and there are some small continents today in this video we will be learning about the second smallest continent of the world can you guess which continent i'm talking about yes we are talking about europe europe is the second smallest continent in the world well besides being the second smallest continent in the world it is a land of rich history and heritage it is a land with many cultures here are some paintings depicting the royal heritage of europe it is the same landmass that was ruled by many kings and queens all the fascinating folk tales of witches dragons dwarfs goblins good magic bad magic all originate in this particular continent so today we will be learning about europe as a continent so let's first come to its very name europe where do you think the word europe has been derived from well the name europe for this continent has been derived from the name of a beautiful princess from greek mythology called europa it is believed that the name also originates from a phoenician word that is europe and this word here means where the sun sets now you must be thinking that the sun sets in the west but europe is not in the western hemisphere right you must be confused about it well from the perspective of asia or the eastern countries europe is regarded as a western continent right and therefore it derives its name from the phoenician word where the sun sets so these are some of the two important origins from where it derives its name so as i just mentioned a while ago that it is not in the western hemisphere but in the eastern hemisphere so now let's actually locate europe as a continent so this is a world map showing different hemispheres of the world so you see europe right here is located almost on the eastern part and entirely on the northern hemisphere so we can say that europe mostly lies in the eastern hemisphere and entirely in the northern hemisphere so we can say that it is a north eastern continent other than that eurasia is the largest continental area on earth comprising of europe and asia so the continent of europe and asia together make up the largest continental area on earth that is eurasia so now that we know that europe lies almost in the eastern hemisphere and entirely in the northern hemisphere let's talk about the size of the continent well talking about the size of the continent europe is 3 times the size of india so europe is about 3 times the size of india and is the second smallest continent in the world so from this world map we can see that the largest continent is asia the smallest continent on the map as we can see is australia and europe is the second smallest continent in the world so now we know the location of europe a good idea of the size of europe which is 3 times the size of india and it is the second smallest continent on the world now let us look at the map of europe again so we see that Europe lies in the temperate zone that is between 73 degree north to 35 degree north and between 25 degree west to 65 degree east now let's talk about the boundaries well to talk about the boundaries europe is surrounded by arctic ocean to its north 
then we have atlantic ocean to its west and mediterranean sea to its south so it is covered by three water bodies on three sides well its immediate neighbors are asia and africa other than that europe is separated from asia by these physical features ural mountains caucasus mountains black sea and caspian sea on this side or on the southern part it is separated from africa by the strait of gibraltar in the mediterranean sea now let us look at the eastern boundaries of europe again that separates the continent of europe from the continent of asia so on the very northeastern part we have the ural mountains now you see that the ural mountains in the northeastern part separates or act as a boundary between europe and asia while in the southeastern part we have the caspian sea the caucasus mountains and the black sea so these in the southeastern part of europe separates this continent of europe from asia however there is a small region that connects the continent of europe to the continent of asia the small region is here near istanbul and turkey near the black sea so let's have a zoomed in view of what exactly connects these two continents so this is a zoomed in view where the european part of istanbul is connected to the asian part of istanbul by the bosphorus bridge yes a very important bridge that can also be called as a connection between the continent of europe and the continent of asia in the southeastern part so we see that the bosphorus strait that separates the two continents here is contradicted by the bosphorus bridge at the same place that connects these two continents so we just understood that in the southeastern part of the continent the bosphorus bridge in istanbul that is in turkey connects europe and asia so this is a real image of the bosphorus bridge connecting europe and asia so before moving on could you help me answer this simple question what is the name of the bridge that connects asia to europe is it the brooklyn bridge or the golden gate bridge or the bosphorus bridge or the oresund bridge sit down yes you have guessed it right that the bosphorus bridge connects asia to africa so the right answer is the bosphorus bridge so now that we have located the continent of europe we have learnt about the important eastern boundaries that separates europe from asia we also learnt about the bosphorus bridge that connects europe and asia in the southeastern part and we learnt about the european continent that surrounds the european continent on the western part the northern part and the southern part respectively so now let's have a look at the map of europe from a geographical perspective so what do you observe about this physical feature of this particular continent is there something different or unique about it so you can see that it is surrounded by water bodies on three side while it is connected to a mainland on one side do we have a name for this physical feature yes this physical feature is regarded or considered as a peninsula so what exactly is a peninsula to define peninsula we could say that a peninsula is a piece of land that is almost entirely surrounded by water but is connected to the mainland on one side image image here 
So this image here also defines or helps us understand the definition of a peninsula. So we can see, so this piece of land is surrounded by water bodies on three sides while it is connected to a main land on one side. So this type of physical structure or feature is known as a peninsula. So we can now say that Europe is a peninsular continent. Other than that, it is not only a peninsula, it is also known as a peninsula of peninsulas. Wow, that's interesting. Why is it known as the peninsula of peninsulas? Because being a peninsula, it has several smaller other important peninsulas within itself. So you can see these are some of the most important smaller peninsulas in Europe. Let's name them. So the major peninsulas within Europe are the Iberian Peninsula, which covers the countries of Portugal and Spain. Then we have the Italian Peninsula, covering the country of Italy. Then we have the Balkan Peninsula, which covers a lot of countries in the southern part of the continent. And then we finally have the Scandinavian Peninsula that comprises of Norway and Sweden. So these four peninsulas are some of the major peninsulas of Europe. So now we know that Europe is a peninsula. But other than that, there's another very special feature to its physical structure or physical appearance. So if you have been noticing carefully the map of Europe, then you must have noticed that the coastline of Europe is not smooth, right? There are many cuts and indents. So such a coastline is called an indented coastline. So to define what is indented coastline, Let's look at this particular definition. So a coastline that is not smooth and has cuts and indents along its length is called an indented coastline. So from this image also you can understand that this particular landmass has an indented coastline as the coastline is not smooth and there are many cuts and indents on the coastline. Such indented coastlines give rise to the formation of creeks and inland water inlets, right? Now let us look at the map or the continent of Europe on this world map. So you see, in comparison to other continents on the world map, Europe has the most uneven coastline. So for example, the continent of Africa. So you see that the coastline is much more smoother as compared to that of Europe. Similarly, that of North America. The coastline is much more smoother and gentle as compared to the continent of Europe. So we can say that Europe has a rugged and uneven coastline. However, this indented coastline has given the continent an economical benefit. How is that? So Europe's rugged and indented coastline has given rise to many natural harbors. Well, so the indented coastline of Europe has proven to be an advantage by giving rise to many natural harbors. Now, why is it an advantage? Are natural harbors really important? Before understanding that, let us understand what exactly are natural harbors. So to define natural harbors, we could say that natural harbors typically occur in bays and river mouths. So bays are round shaped river mouths. And what are river mouths? Well, where the rivers enter into larger water bodies. Right? So they occur typically in bays and river mouths where the land and water converges to protect the ships. So here the land and the water has converged to protect the ships from wind and waves as they enter these natural harbors and dock. 
So on this particular picture, you can see that this area here is like an enclosure where the land and water, see, the land and water has nearly converged to form a protected area for the ships. So this particular convergence actually helps the ships or protects the ships from winds and waves as they enter and dock. So as you can see that this is a zoomed in picture of this particular area. So you see that the ships have entered and docked right here and this is an example of a natural harbour. Just so you know, this particular image is of the largest natural harbour in the world which is in Sweden. Now. The number of natural harbours around Europe has given it a history of seafaring and fishing traditions. So we just learned that the indented coastline of Europe has given rise to many natural harbours. Well, these natural harbours have proven to be very, very beneficial for the country. Why? Because they have a history of seafaring and fishing traditions. That means that it has helped boost the economy of this particular continent. So, the natural harbours of Europe are many, however, so the most important natural harbours are Bremerhaven, Hamburg, Rotterdam, Antwerp, Piraeus, Barcelona, Valencia, Algeciras, Le Havre and Felixstowe. Out of all these natural harbours, the largest seaport in Europe is the port of Rotterdam, right? So the port of Rotterdam is the largest seaport in Europe and not only is it the largest seaport, it is also an important transit point for trade between Europe and other countries of the world. Right. Other than that, this particular port is a very innovative port as it has eventually expanded over the years, giving access to many hybrid ships. Other than that, it has also committed to the goal of CO2 or carbon dioxide neutrality. So the history of seafaring can be dated back to the age of discovery where Europe had a central position or a key role to play. So let's see how. So the age of discovery can be dated back to the 15th century and Europe was at its center. Europe got to know that there were huge deposits of spices and gold on the eastern expanse of Asia. So it decided to take a direct route to these Asian countries. Portugal's prince, that is Prince Henry, the navigator, explored the western part of Africa and many explorers followed him, where Vasco da Gama actually found the direct route to India. Spain was not ready to fall back and so it decided to do the opposite of Portugal. It went out to look for Asia by advancing towards the western side, where it ended up exploring the new world. However, when the sea routes or the art of sea navigation became very developed, many countries of Europe spread across the world and explored many parts of the world. Right. So when the European countries explored different parts of the world or the new world, they did not waste any time to spread its colonies across the world, right? So on spreading its colonies, Europe not only expanded its trade, but became one of the most important powers or colonial powers in the world, right? So you can see on this map that the red lines here this indicates that Europe used to bring in or import raw materials from these colonized countries at a cheaper price and then manufacture them using high technologies and then export these back to these colonized countries and sell it at a higher price. So while these red lines indicate the colonial imports, these blue lines on the map actually shows you the colonial exports. Right. Other than that, there were also the presence of intercolonial trade, which used to take place between the colonized countries.
right? So you see that Europe having a central position in the world was able to carry on with its trade and commerce with all the countries of the world. So we can say that Europe occupied a central position in the northern hemisphere particularly and this gave it an ample scope for trade and commerce with all the continents of the world. So all these factors, be it its location, be it the natural harbors that were a gift of its indented rugged coastline, so be it a land of a great mythology or be it a land which has been ruled by many kings and queens with a diverse cultural heritage or be it a land with many natural harbors that is a gift of its very rugged and indented coastline. Europe has been and is still a fascinating continent that attracts both researchers and travelers from across the world. So besides being a fascinating continent in itself, there are various famous places in Europe that makes it more attractive. And what are these famous places? We have Paris in France, we have Italy, we have London in UK, we have Spain, Iceland and Scotland. So while France and UK are famous for their beautiful monuments, Italy is famous for its yummy delicious foods. On the other hand, Spain, Iceland and Scotland are famous for its scenic beauty. Wow, the screen looks yummy. Well, that now we have talked well, we just now talked about the Italian food, the yummy Italian food. Let's see some of the most famous and most demanded foods. So we have pizza that we all love. Then we have spaghetti. Then we have gelato and we also have pasta. So these are some of the most yummy, delicious food that you would never want to miss. So while talking of food, we cannot really do away with chocolate. Chocolate is a favorite of so many people. Well, a huge production of this chocolate is done in Europe itself. The major multinational companies have chocolate confectionery production plants in Europe, making it the largest manufacturer and exporter of finished chocolate products in the world. So some of the major multinational companies of chocolate have their confectionery chocolate production plants in Europe, making it not only the largest manufacturer, but also the largest exporter. By report of 2020, about 76% of the global chocolate sale was from Europe. So you see that some of the most delicious and most demanded chocolates are produced in Europe. So in this video, we learned about Europe as a continent. We understood that Europe has a central position in the world map, right? It is not only an important power, but a fascinating continent to visit. We further learned that Europe not only has a diverse and rich history, but we also learned that its rugged and indented coastline has gifted to it many natural harbors that has helped boost the economy of Europe, right? So we see that Europe is a very interesting continent to learn about. In the next video, we will be learning about the physical features of Europe in details. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. 
So register for free now.